Special Olympics Washington. Today we are going through powerlifting and all the things that you need to know about being a volunteer with us. So jumping right in, of course, as always, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. That is the Special Olympics oath and it leads everything that we do. Uh, so really the point of today is to talk about volunteer fundamentals. Uh, this is more so a broad scope, uh, kind of some higher level stuff when it comes to powerlifting. When you actually arrive on site uh, is where you'll receive your more specific training, more details about what your role actually will be. But this will help kind of just give you a better background on um, everything as a whole. Uh, so some basics. Our sports season is from March until June. Uh, the culminating state event for powerlifting is our state spring games which is held at uh, Pacific Lutheran University and Joint Base Lewis McCord. Uh, powerlifting itself is held on the base. Uh, so volunteer roles, so they include spotters and loaders, uh, which are you know, actually putting the plates on and off as athletes get ready to lift. Platform manager, which is just helping making sure that the flow of athletes is moving smooth, um, everyone's in the right order. We have referees who actually judge the lift, make sure it's a proper lift, and then of course our announcer and some awards helpers. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, this event, so our state games event, it will be held on Joint Base Lewis McCord. So there are some important things to think about as you get ready to volunteer with us if you're coming to our state games. Uh, for those of you who registered prior to the middle of the May, your passes to get on the base will be in the mail. They'll be sent out to you. For those of you who registered prior to the deadline and did not receive your pass by the Friday of the state games, please just stop by our visitor center. Uh, it's going to be right off of exit 120 and briefly swing by our volunteer table. So when you go to the Joint Base Lewis McCord Visitor Center, we'll have a little tent and a table out there where you can uh, pick up your pass and get on base. For those of you who registered after the May deadline, uh, you must visit the visitor center to receive a day pass. And you actually only need one volunteer pass per car. The rest in the car will need an ID. So Joint Base Lewis McCord map, uh, just kind of mapping things out for us. So uh, this, this direction here is north. This is south. So on the, e on the right side there is north. Um, you're going to take this exit, come over to Joint Base Lewis McCord Visitor Center. If you go south from here, uh, so a right out of the parking lot, that's going to be the direction to powerlifting. And of course, we'll have maps that direct you guys towards that. And if you go left out of this visitor center, that's going to take you onto the entrance for cycling. Um, and again, we'll have directions once you actually get to the visitor center um, and actually getting on the base. Our events offered at powerlifting, we have the squat, the bench, the deadlift. Um, we also have a two combination lift, which is the bench and the deadlift. And finally, the three combination lift, which is putting together the squat, bench, and deadlift. Uh, so some general rules. No athlete will be allowed to participate in powerlifting events without a certified coach. This isn't really something that you guys as volunteers will be tracking on site, but it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, an athlete's score for a lifting event will be the maximum amount that was successfully lifted during the event. The score for a combination event, that's going to be the sum of the maximum successfully completed lifts. Uh, there also may be an opportunity for an athlete to try a personal best lift at the state that says summer should be spring games. Uh, a personal best attempt is performed after the official results have been recorded. So bar and disc specification. So this is important for you guys who are spotters and loaders to so just keep in mind, you don't have to memorize all these numbers. Uh, but just certain things to keep in mind, you know, things like uh, the diameter of the bar, uh, the diameter of the largest disc. The big one that kind of keep in mind is the weight of the largest disc can only be 45 kilograms, 99 pounds. Uh, and the weight of the largest bar and collars can only be 25 kilograms and 55 pounds. And then finally, the disc must go in the following range. So 45, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. 2.5, 1.25, all in kilograms. So it's just kind of an important thing to keep in mind there. Uh, of course, we're going to have these all for you guys, but it's just something to keep in mind as you know we kind of take a look at 
uh, what equipment we have, making sure everything lines up right. Our division, so we do have quite a few divisions for our athletes. They're gonna be placed in divisions according to their gender, age, ability, and weight class. So quite a few differences there. So we're gonna have quite a few groups coming through. Uh, Weigh-in, so before trials and finals, the weigh-in of competitors must take place at least one hour and 15 minutes before the beginning of competition. Lifters will be divided into flights of no more than 15 lifters, which will then be divided into divisions of no less than three and no more than eight lifters. Uh, the Wilkes formula is presented in kilograms as a table of coefficient. Each lifter has a coefficient determined by their body weight. The squat, so this is really important for you guys, squatters and loaders, referees, just kind of anybody watching the competition. Uh, in the squat, the lifter assumes an upright position with the top of the bar not more than three centimeters below the top surface of the deltoids. Uh, the bar must be held horizontally across the shoulders with the hands and fingers gripping the bar, not the collars, and feet flat on the platform with knees locked. After removing the bar from the racks, the lifters will then move backwards to establish their position. At this point, the lifter will wait in this position until the chief referee gives a signal. Uh, at this point, the lifter begins their lift and they must recover at will without double bouncing or any downward movement after starting to an upright position. Uh, the signal to replace the bar will consist of a backward motion in the hand and an audible command to rack. So if you guys are being a referee, that's important to know here. Uh, the lifter shall not hold the collar sleeves disc at any point during the lift. Uh, and the lifter can enlist the help of you spotters and loaders in removing the bar and placing it on the racks. However, once the bar has cleared the racks, spotters and loaders should not assist the lift further with regard to positioning, foot placement, things like that. Our bench press, so the next lift, so the lifter will assume the position on the bench and maintain this position during the entirety of the lift. So the head, the trunk, including the buttocks, must be extended on the bench, and the feet must be on the floor. The referee signal will be given when the bar is absolutely motionless on the chest. Athletes who are unable to lift or fully lock out a bench press, they'll have a certified coach state that at weigh-in. Uh, so we'll make sure we let you guys know who are referees and uh, spotters and loaders when that might be happening. The deadlift, uh, our last lift, so the, the bar must be laid horizontally in front of the lifter's feet, gripped with both hands and lifted with one continuous motion until the lifter is standing erect. At completion of the lift, the knees must be locked and the shoulders thrust back. Uh, also at the completion of the lift, the knees sh should be locked in the straight position and they should not be held in a forward or rounded position. Uh, the shoulders do not have to be thrust backwards past the erect position. However, if they are thrust back in that manner and all the other criteria is acceptable, the lift will be accepted. Uh, one, you know, the big thing here is the volunteer code of conduct. As a Special Olympics volunteer, I agree that while serving, I will provide for the general welfare, health, and safety of all Special Olympics athletes and volunteers, dress and act in an appropriate manner at all times, follow the established rules and guidelines, Report any emergencies to the proper authorities. Abstain from the consumption or use of all alcohol, tobacco, and illegal substances. And of course, not engage in any inappropriate contact or relationship with athletes, volunteers, or other participants. We just wanna thank you guys for volunteering. Uh, like I mentioned, this is just a super high level overview of what exactly is gonna be going on at our powerlifting event. Again, you're gonna be receiving more information through the email as you approach your event. As well as on site, you'll actually receive a detailed training from our site supervisor on what you're going to be doing for the day. We're always looking for more volunteers for our events, uh, so be sure to have your friends and family register today. You can check out all of our available opportunities by heading to specialolympicswashington.org slash volunteer. And for confirmation of volunteer hours, please email me at arider at soa.org. And of course, we'll also have volunteer forms on site. Again, just want to thank you guys so much for volunteering with us. Couldn't do it without you guys and can't wait to see you out there.